people. Uh, I am your host Nick and welcome to episode 4 of Day to Day. With me in the studio is S to the A to the M to the H to the I to the R, Vazdev. Samir, what do we have in store for folks today? Well, I'm really excited Nick, not just because we just learned that you can S to the P to the E to the L, L, but also because for the past three months I have been recording every single thing I've done on this phone uh, for using an app called App Usage. That is crazy. All right, Samir, so how do we even begin to get that data off of your phone? Sure, well, it's actually not as hard as I would have imagined. There are quite a few apps out there that you can install, including one for free, App Usage, that I installed on my Android device. And again, it's no cost at all. Mm. Sounds like a great tool for those of us who are trying to overcome our smartphone addictions. And as a side note, I tried to do a similar thing with my iPhone. I found an app called Moment. And it did have some nice features. I could figure out how to get kind of overall usage. I could figure out uh, basically how many times I was picking up the phone. But it really wasn't great for in measuring kind of specific number of apps because I ended up having to take a screenshot of my home screen. So something you should think about if you're trying to do this with an Apple device. Yeah, we couldn't quite find a good uh, app for, for iPhone devices, um, which is also your fault in the first place for owning an Apple product. <laughs> Indeed. So, uh, Samir, uh, talk data to me. What uh, type of data are we able to get off this phone? Sure. Well, I'll just show you what the app looks like and all the information that you can get on it. So, as you can see, uh, Nick, it's tracking basically everything I've done in a kind of a log format, going backwards from now uh, in terms of what apps I've opened, where I've unlocked my screen, um, where I've locked my screen, times I opened my Gmail, BBC, other apps as well. So, it's really tracking everything. I love the timeline feature too. That's really neat. Yeah. Uh, and what about export? Oh, it's super straightforward. On the top right here, there's an option to export as CSV. And again, I mentioned this is a free app. There is a paid version that lets you export this immediately. Otherwise, you have the distinct honor of watching a 30 second uh, video of something. Can't wait to watch that. A few moments later. And how does it fare according to your infamous data cleaning score test? Well, here's what the actual spreadsheet looks like that comes out of the app. And as you can see, it's really clean. It's telling you the app name, the date that you actually opened the app, the time of day, and for how many seconds you did it. So I would say, honestly, it's between four and five stars. It's super easy to get, as you saw, mm -hmm. and the data quality is pretty good as well. Ah, it's really exciting. So, okay, my friend, let us visualize. What tool are we gonna use today? Well, you know, this is time to explore a tool that I'm just getting used to that I'm really excited about called Power BI. Mm, I love Power BI. Uh, one of my favorite new tools made by Microsoft, I know, what you're thinking. You're thinking Microsoft, really, Nick? But let me tell you, this is one of the most powerful tools out there for visualizing, especially for folks who are using Excel and trying to make really complex dashboards, pivot tables, and slicers. Yeah, that's true. We recently had a colleague actually explore Tableau and Power BI. Tableau was another <laughs> similar tool. And I gotta say, it seemed like Power BI came out on top on more than a few fronts there, Nick. So yeah, it's so, a pretty good tool. So folks should check it out, especially if you already have a, a Microsoft relationship at your organization. Uh, so uh, Samir, uh, let's get started. What are the big questions that you want to ask with this data set? Well, I had many questions, uh, as I'm sure you were when you're talking about your phone usage because we spend so much time on the thing. So my first question was obviously was just how much time do I spend in front of my screen mm -hmm. uh, every day? I was also curious about particular apps. Which apps do I use the most? And then are there any patterns basically maybe on the day of the week or even the time of the day where certain apps I'm using more than others. And because of the different kind of dimensions that I wanted to look at here, uh, Power BI might be a really good tool for that. Yeah, so let's go in and walk us through some of the mechanics of how you'd even begin to build the dashboard in Power BI. Nick, I thought you'd never ask. So this is what Power BI looks like. It's some desktop software that you can download for free. Um, there are some added features you get if you also have an account. But most accounts though, they ask that you be part of an organization like a school or a company. Maybe some folks have it at work though. Yeah, definitely worth checking in. So once you get into this um, interface, the first thing you're going to want to do is add a data source. So in the top left, you can see Get Data. Uh, when I click on that and open an Excel sheet, you'll see that it automatically kind of investigates what's in that sheet. 
And I'm gonna choose just one of the several sheets that I have in there called Cleaned Apps. This is basically the same data set that I showed earlier, um, but with a little bit more information about things like what day of the week, et cetera. You can get a nice preview, hit load, and you'll see it pop up here on the right-hand side of the screen. Looks like it's actually pretty fast, too, given how much data is in that uh, yeah, download. Yeah, it's thousands and thousands of rows, so I'm really impressed with the speed of, of a lot of the analysis this can do. So here you have on the right side all of the fields that are in the sheet called Cleaned Apps. And these fields really are um, nothing more than columns is the best way of thinking about it. Mm, interesting, okay. So the first question I had uh, is, which apps do I spend the most amount of time on? Um, and so there's a pretty straightforward way of doing that. You see here we have this visualization section where we can choose what kind of visual we want to do. I'll start with something basic like a bar chart, but keep in mind you can make it scatter plots, circle charts, line charts, and get pretty sophisticated actually. So we'll start here. You can see it's immediately added something on the left hand side, which is great, right? Yeah. So easy to kind of either click or drag that data onto your canvas. Yeah, it's really meant for you to be able to assemble dashboards, reports, etc. And I gotta say, most of the features that we're talking about here in this session are no more than, you know, tip of the iceberg, 1% of all the things you can do here, including things like setting different reports and different permissions for different people. So a lot of enterprise applications as well. So let's say I wanna look, for instance, at um, how many apps, which apps I use the most. The first thing I'm gonna to want to do is, is on the right-hand side, if I just click on app name, you can see it's added it automatically to the axis. Okay. The next thing I'm gonna to want to do is, let's say I want to know how many minutes I spent on each app. I have a column here called duration minute, and all I do is click on that, and it's added it as the value. Mm, okay. Well, you see here, it's not super convenient right now. You can you kind of have to scroll through to see all the different apps. So what I'm gonna do is just simply sort by the duration. And you can see immediately uh, which apps I spend the most amount of time on. Yeah, it's fascinating. I think what, what this story tells me is that really of the long tail of all the apps on your phone, you're only really using maybe 10 or 20 significantly, and the rest, not that much. Yeah, and I would say understatement of the century is significantly. <laughs> I mean, this is about 50 hours of this particular app called Reddit. Chrome and Gmail come in a close second and third. WhatsApp surprised me as well. So yeah. something interesting there. But let's say you want to dive a bit more beyond this, right? Yeah. One of the things that I'm kind of curious about is, do does my app usage vary, let's say, on different days of the week? All right, so in this case, I'm gonna come over to the visualizations and add a new one. In this case, let's do, with, let's do an area chart, so a line with the area filled in beneath. Uh, and what I'll do here is on the axis, I'm gonna go with the uh, day of the week, and then on the value, I'll say, let's say how many hours I've spent on each day of the week, for example. Um, and I'll quickly rearrange this. You can see it's pretty easy to move things yeah, around. Yeah, look at that. And there's one small thing I have to do here. Um, you'll notice the, uh, the actual day of the week is ordered kind of strange. It's yeah, alphabetical. That's funny. Look at that, okay. You know, like many new tools, there are quirks with many of them. One here is that you actually have to make a new column that assigns a number to each of the days of the week. To get them to be ordered right. Exactly. So it's pretty okay. straightforward, and I'll quickly go in here and just um, sort the day field uh, by this new column I created called day number. A small fix, a small workaround, but one of the things that I really can't emphasize enough is how much documentation and support is online for this tool. So this, for instance, is something that I learned very quickly after a quick Google. Mm. So now we've got these two graphics side by side. What kinds of things can we do to see the relationship between these data sets? Yeah, that's one of the most powerful things here that we haven't even gotten into here, but relationships between data sets is a really strong piece of the Power BI platform. Um, the first insight that's already interesting to me, for instance, is that Sundays are by far my you know most frequent phone app day, uh, days. And the weekends, I tend to be off the phone a little bit more, Friday mm -hmm. and Saturday. But wait till you see what happens when I start trying to click on uh, and interact with something on the left here. Let's say if I wanted to compare my overall usage throughout the week with, let's say, my usage of Chrome. Yeah. So if I click here on Chrome, you can see on the right-hand side, it dynamically Ooh, changed. Amazing. And you can keep doing this for all of the apps. And again, this is tip of the iceberg. This so one cool. surprised me, but I think it, at my job, more and more, I've been communicating with different people in different parts of the world on WhatsApp, so it makes sense that it spikes during the week. Yeah, interesting, okay. Um, Instagram has a pretty hard weekend spike for me. It's a busy day Sunday for you, Instagramming your life, huh? That's right. Um, and so on and so forth. Oh, this is great. So Samir, tell us, take us even further and tell us what else we can do with this data set uh, inside Power BI. Yeah, I think what's so powerful, powerful about Power BI is the data exploration uh, that it lets you do. And so what I've done is I've basically spent some more time building out more things like this, more widgets, more visualizations, but also took advantage of some of Power BI's really powerful design features to build something that looks kind of like a good dashboard that you yeah. want to present to someone. So here is a lot going on. So very briefly, you recognize this 
uh, chart here. This is the apps I've used the most by day. And it gives you an overall level here of 296 hours I've spent on the phone. But again, I'm gonna click, let's say, zoom in just on WhatsApp, and you'll see everything else on the interface has changed, right? Mm. Um, so again, on the top right, we still have the day of week, but what I found was very interesting is how my app usage varies by different time of day. Very cool, such a powerful tool, huh? That's right, and you can get some pretty interesting insights as well. Again, my Reddit usage spiking on the uh, um, in the uh, morning and in the evenings, mm. using Google a lot more than I would have thought at midnight. In fact, I use, <laughs> I use Google Chrome more often at midnight than any other time of the day as well. Now this particular feature that what we're looking at here is basically what happens when you export the Power BI dashboard you saw me building okay. to their online platform. And their online platform is good and bad. I think the good side of it is really that you can collaborate with other people on the same dashboard. So really mm. powerful as well. So this is actually all online and anyone can access mm. this mm. Uh, right now. And this is neat. So I guess what we're looking at here is you've got sort of the same information, minutes on phone by hour of day, visualized three different ways. And so you've got, looks like an area area um, chart over here. You've got a bar graph over here and then a donut chart as well. Yeah. So interesting to see the different varieties. Yeah, available. it's a really cool tool to try to figure out when you're trying to explore what visualization might I want to use for different purposes. And again, you can imagine what happens when you select different Everything things. is dynamic. No, that explorability really, you mentioned earlier, that explorability angle here for Power BI is really what distinguishes it. And finally, Nick, very briefly, I wanted to show you some yeah. of the things you can do with design. You can also bring in mm -hmm. photos, graphics, videos. Really, it was almost, it felt like I was designing a PowerPoint presentation. Mm -hmm. um, and this, for instance, shows the comparison between my texting time and my phone time, um, how many uh, hours I've spent on each one. And you can see the same kind of uh, effects here as well. That's amazing. Well, Samir, this has been incredible to deep dive into uh, Power BI and your data set. And hopefully folks can follow along as they've done with previous episodes and, and practice alongside us and, and actually use their own data to, to do this. And we want to see and hear examples. A few of you shared from previous episodes the cool stuff you're doing. We'll have more of that and uh, other ideas for what else we should cover. Please do. We welcome your ideas. And I'm also very curious. Surely I'm not the only one who spends so much time on a phone. So I'd love some validation <laughs> from all of you as well. All right, folks. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. All right, signing off. Ciao. Samir. 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 Hey, Samir. what's up, man? How's it going? Samir. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. Samir. Samir. It's hungry, Nora. <laughs> <laughs>